Join us this week on Real Flicks and Popcorn Picks as Dan and Amanda review Queen Bees, a 2021 comedy romance featuring Ellen Bernstein and James Caan. Hi, everybody. I'm Amanda. I'm Dan. And welcome to Real Flicks and Popcorn Picks. So we're talking today about Queen Bees, mm -hmm. and I feel like it was a pretty good movie. I'll say in the beginning, I felt like it was a little bit slow moving. 35 minutes in, I was already starting to look at the clock. But as I started to get into it, I fell in love with the relationship that Ellen Burstyn's character, Helen, has with her grandson, Peter. It was so heartwarming. I mean, he was really doing anything he could to share time with her, to talk to her, and it kind of made me feel guilty because I, I feel like I didn't share enough time with my grandmother. So it made me it made me feel a little bit sad. That's what I was feeling. Like this movie really makes you think about your relatives, whether it's your parents, your grandparents, and you know, what's gonna happen later in life. Are they gonna live with you and you know for the remaining days, or are you gonna put them in a retirement home to let them live out their days on their own? So in a way that's it's 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 a bittersweet. Yes. I guess if you wanna say yeah. it like that. Bittersweet is like the perfect way to describe it. Be even like the whole undertone of the story was all about like, it's never too late. Right. So I felt like even that was like bittersweet. Like the idea that, you know, you can find love again even later in life because you know, Ellen Burstyn's character meets James Caan in the, in the assisted living facility. Right, and run through some of the cast members as you're mentioning. Yeah. Like we got Anne Margaret, who I love from Grumpy Old Men. Jane Curtin. Yeah. Who is uh Coneheads, no? Well that and Jane, you ignorant slut. Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> From SNL, the original SNL. That was a wow. big classic line that Dan yes. Aykroyd did. Mm -hmm. Right? And then you got James Caan, of course, who is a legend. Yeah, and this uh, was his last film. One of them, yes. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. And we got Christopher Lloyd. Love Christopher Lloyd. Come on, back to back the future. Back to the future. Yeah. <laughs> And then one actress I wanted to bring up that I tend to butcher her last name every time I say it is Marianne Mueller Layla. You got it. There you go. She was one of the bridge partners that kind of disappears in the beginning. But I wanted to bring up a really underrated comedy she was in called Sex Drive. Really funny movie with Seth Green. Uh, who's the kid from the notebook? Uh, Marston, maybe? Is, is that him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, really underrated comedy and her short little scene in Sex Drive just stole the movie. Like probably one of the funniest scenes in the movie. Highly re recommend that one. Mm -hmm. In fact, we might actually review that in the future. Ooh. But, and then of course, as you mentioned, Ellen Bernstein, who is uh, the mother from The Exorcist. Oh. Talking about Ellen Burstyn, what a legend. So like you were saying, she was the mother in the Exorcist film. Right. She also was a star in Requiem for a Dream. Do you right. remember that movie? Yes. yes. Wow, now that movie was wild. Right. <laughs> Stuck I, with me. I really liked watching the relationship grow with James Caan, pursuing her in the beginning. Yes. Right, and then and how she was kind of like, get away from me, get away from me, but then they kind of, you know, yeah. I won't say too much, but it was cute. It was really cute. Yeah, well, spoiler alert, because from from the get-go, I had a feeling that it was actually Peter, the grandson who hired him, to come in to make her feel at home in the assisted living because she had so much resistance to moving into that assisted living. Her like she was fighting her daughter tooth and nail, did not want to go. I felt so bad for her because I was thinking, what happens to me when I get older? I don't have kids. I'm like, I need to be saving money to, so that I can take care of myself. Because what happens when like, you can't speak for yourself and then there's the people that are responsible for you are pushing you to do something that you don't want to do. Right. And I feel like I feel bad, but you know, she had so much resistance. So I felt like her grandson wanted her to be happy and to feel welcome. So I thought he was the one that actually paid to have James Caan come in and make her feel at home. But it was sweet that they ended up, spoiler alert, they ended up falling in love. It was so sweet and getting married. Oh, what a heartwarming part of the film. Speaking of horror and the exorcist and all that, also we got Courtney Gaines from Children of the Corn. Yes. He was the redheaded kid from Children of the Corn. Right? He steals her purse when they're at the diner. Oh, I know. And then, then they go out and get revenge <laughs> and uh, give him a little knee to the, you know, where. Yeah, the way they beat him up, man. Right, that was right. so funny. Was such a perfect little cameo. Yeah. Like, that was great. That was awesome. 
I mean, and then you have talk, talking about all the women getting together and beating the guy up. What about the mean girls? There are these mean girls that do not want to let Ellen Burstyn come in and join them at their bridge table. And then, man, she becomes one of the, one of the crew. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I could say she almost became the leader in a way. Yeah. Kind of pushed the other one to the side. Mm -hmm. But I felt like some of that stuff was a little typical of the movie. Like the way that they approached it, I felt like there were chances to really build the characters more too. Do you, do you feel that way or do you feel like they, they touched it enough? I don't know. I think the movie was a little short for them to, to touch on too much more. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing I did like was one of the quotes they said in there and that was, 80 is the new 18. <laughs> That was great. That was great. <laughs> it makes me feel good. I'm, right. I'm young. We got plenty of time, guys, for sure. I did love the scene, though. I really, and I know this was kind of typical. I'm like, oh, funny, our, our grandmas get high. But I thought it was really funny when they were, then when they got high together and they were laughing. I was waiting for the munchies to hit. Her hair falls out. I mean, it was so, it was cute. No, I'm going to say that was my favorite scene. I, th I mean, I know it was like typical and there were points where they could have done way more with the characters, but I mean, it was cute. It was really, really cute. I was definitely waiting. For I was excited for them to go and grab all the good stuff from the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it was that one. It was. Yeah, I love the fact that they were getting stoned in bed, laughing hysterical. <laughs> And what was great is when you see the kitchen door and it opens with those two laughing hysterical, walking out with all the Oreos and the chips and stuff in their hand. That was great. That was and then great. they wake up the next morning and it's like, did we? And she's like, ah, oh. like, that is not on my bucket list. It's so funny. Christopher Lloyd. He just had these these quirky looks with, he barely had any lines, but like all his lines were facial expressions. So like when he's flirting with all the older women, you know, he's always like, you know, <laughs> eyebrow raise and a little, mm -hmm. he was like this older Casanova. But did, did you feel bad? Like I felt bad that he had, he had Alzheimer's, right? Yeah. And like he couldn't remember anybody. Oh my goodness. That's the whole bittersweet thing with this movie. Yeah. It's like, you wanna like it, you wanna, you know, really enjoy it. But at the same time, you start thinking about when you're getting older and your parents are getting older and that kind of makes you depressed. <laughs> but so who was your favorite character? Oh, it was it was Ellen Burris and Helen. Oh, yeah, she it, was great. I felt like Jane Curtin is an amazing actress. I don't know, I felt like they could have did a little bit more with her too. Like, I feel like she didn't have that much dialogue about like her backstory, but I guess that was the point of her character was that she was so private and she didn't talk to her son anymore. It was sad. That was another sad, that another bittersweet sad Right, thing. which explained why she was so mean through the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, that was her guard. So on that note, right. do you buy it, stream it, or drown it in butter? I don't necessarily say I want to drown it in butter because it wasn't terrible. I definitely wouldn't own it. Um, I'd probably stream it. I don't know how often though. Like, I, th I think it was more of a one and done for me, but it was cute enough where I could say, I could see myself streaming it again. Mm -hmm. Way down the road though, mm -hmm. no time soon. How about you? I don't know. I think for me, it's a one and done only because of that bittersweet undertone. I don't know if I, if I want to sit through that again. Yeah. And is that like me wanting to ignore the reality in a way? Maybe, but I mean, it was sweet, like the heartwarming parts at the end where they do end up finding love. And I also liked during the credits where they showed like the wedding pictures of older people that found love later in life. Right, right, them. right, absolutely. So that yeah. was really heartwarming yeah, that was too. Cute. That was cute. Yeah, but I think, I think I'm a one and done for that for sure. Right. So thanks for watching Real Flicks and Popcorn Picks. And check us out on our next episode when we review Super Mario Brothers. We'll see you guys soon. Do, 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 do. Do.